Hello, I'm Sarah Stremska, and you're watching the Pulse of Culture here on TVP World. The Amo, a new album by a renowned music trio, Moshe Danielson Fresco, premieres in a few days on November 16th. To discuss this latest project, I am joined here today by Leszek Mosher, an extraordinary Polish composer, pianist and music producer. Hello, sir. Delighted to have you with us. Thank you very much for the invitation. All right. So this latest project is a collaboration with your friends. Right. So what was the creative project like? Uh, we played together for many years and um, it was actually my inner need to uh, widen the territory of music we are working on because you have to understand that every modern musician talking in the understandable language uh, is allowed to use only 12 notes which makes you a slave in fact that's why we decided to argument you know to, to make it wider to use some more notes that's why I had to hire three pianos rent three pianos every of them tuned differently so that I have more than 12 notes in the octave. Right, I actually did some research. So uh, you have three pianos tuned to different frequencies. And so 440 hertz is the usual frequency, right? Yeah. But you also can have a 342, which would produce lower tones, if I'm not four, mistaken. 432, yes, yes, yes. Uh, and then, uh, for instance, some places such as uh, Vienna Philharmonic has uses, for instance, 445. Can you unpack this for us? Because it, it sounds super complicated. What does it entail? Yes, you know, the, the macrosocial engineering needs the society divide to different groups fighting with each other. Even on the territory of music, uh, it happened that uh, the new f norm of tuning was introduced, which was called 432 tuning. Uh, it's just a different standard of tuning. The same system, but a, a bit different standard, a bit lower. You know, the, the first note when you go to, a, uh, to the Philharmony, always the concert, uh, the, the, the prime uh, violin gives the first note for the whole orchestra to tune. This is the standard tone. It can be 440 or 442 or 444, depends. But 432 is promoted as a uh, additional or uh, contrary or, you know, avant-garde kind of tuning, which is supposed to heal you and all that. Uh, and they are promoted as uh, standards which fight with each other. But I decided to connect them, you know, to use them both at the same time. And meanwhile, also, I had an opportunity to work on a different kind of tuning, decaphonic tuning. We divided the octave into 10 steps instead of 12. So connecting those three systems makes our music uh, just uh, more interesting, at least for us. Right, but is it something that a layperson, not a, not a music aficionado, can actually pick up on, or we wouldn't notice? Uh, you, will, you will notice. I mean, you will notice. Uh, you can't tell the difference uh, between 440 and 432. Maybe if you observe your body very deeply, like you understand what kind of reactions inside the body, this tuning, it might produce a little bit different uh, sensations, but... Uh, you cannot really tell which one is 432 and 440, but when they are used together, you just feel and understand that something is different. So the audience would uh, pick up on that. Uh, but this is your part, right? I mean, this has to yeah. do with, with uh, playing the piano. What about your colleagues? Yeah, they, they were very happy to do it. Uh, Zohar Fresco, which comes from Israel, he is very much into Indian music and Middle Eastern uh, tradition. He, he said that it sounds a bit like from his area because in India you can have systems even 40 notes in an octave, uh, not only 12 like we have in Europe. It's a very rude musical system. Um, Lars Danielson, uh, amazing bass player, was also very happy because he could do much more things on his bass than usual because, you know, uh, every bass is, is tightened up into tuning to the system. So for us it was a great journey and I hope the audience will understand it and also will follow us and appreciate what we are doing. Absolutely, you're all such uh, extraordinary musicians uh, and you've known each other for around 20 years. 20 years. Yeah. So, I mean, was it difficult or easy to, to work with your friends? Oh, of course it's easy, you know, that we are also progressing and changing the personality, uh, you know, in the a, in a passage of time it's changing, but uh, there's something which never changed. Our love to music, our enthusiasm about creating something new, and especially with this project we could really uh, have a feeling that we are entering completely new territory. 
Right, and uh, so you keep on searching for new inspirations and sort of new ways of approaching music. Um, so what is on your to-do list looking forward? Uh, you know, pr progress as a human being and uh, trying to widen the reality with still being understood. This is a problem that if you, if you run too far, you can uh, lose touch with your audience. So in, on this album, we are introducing this not too much, you know, to still be understand, uh, understandable. Because um, going completely abstract, then you lost, you lose the sense of reality, and, and you might uh, simply be not understood by uh, our people. And we want to connect with our audience. And this is a very good point because I mean, uh, classical music is beautiful, but it's also, uh, like you've mentioned, quite difficult for wider audiences. So, what can be done to make it a little easier for them? Or uh, if, if someone wanted to, you know, sort of uh, start listening to, to classical music a little bit more, where should they start? Uh, classical music is a mathematical system, so I always say that to the parents that please play classical music for your, for your kids because then uh, they are introduced the mathematical system of tempered tuning, which, uh, which is a good training for the brain. You start to understand the measurement of the notes and uh, the distance between the notes and uh, simply the brain is just, uh, you know, developing faster. Um, but uh, of course you have to balance the inner need of be creative and out outer pressure of being, being understood and we are still balancing with it. Right, but then you also have your, your, your group of fans uh, who are, of course, uh, much more uh, sophisticated than, than, uh, than some other people. Um, so, I mean, what are they looking for in your music? If you want to be understood, you have to simplify your language. This is the first, uh, first thing. So if you analyze the pop music today, it's ma mainly based on five uh, notes. Every, every hit basically, basically use five notes uh, because it's just less processing of the brain to understand the music, which is, which is understandable because people have a lot of things to think about. But it sounds sad, I mean, just five notes. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't say it's sad, you know, not everybody has enough, you know, uh, electricity to be consumed by analyzing, counting, analyzing the music, you know, following it. It's a work for the brain. It's a little work for the mind. Uh, that's why the pop music usually uses, it's called pentatonic scale. It's just the main scale. Uh, every, every, almost every famous piece is based only on five, no, five notes. Uh, so even when we are argue, uh, changing the reality, it's like, like a good painting, you know, that's, it's still realistic but the uh, proportions are a little bit distorted. That's how we wanted to do it, yes? I forgot about the question. Sorry, I'm so much into myself that <laughs> I, I don't, I don't no, really I, answer. I was actually wondering what, what your fans are looking for specifically in your music. Are there some elements that uh, you would say that you know, you're trying to perhaps cater to them? Uh, everybody going to the concert, paying the tickets, is enslaved on your chair. You have to sit there for one hour. So you think, you listen to music and you follow the music, but in fact, you have a contact with your own personality, with your own inner processes. For one or two hours uh, of a concert, you have a chance to contact your inner world. That's what it's all about. So we, as musicians, try to harmonize the space for the people to hear themselves from inside. So that's our job. Uh, I mean, it is, it is a lovely, uh, lovely task indeed, indeed. And I mean, the, the music sounds very co uh, contemplative. So, uh, so I do um, appreciate that. I wanted to ask you about uh, something a little different because a new piece, uh, I mean, uh, Lost uh, Walls by Chopin has recently been uh, unearthed. And I was wondering if you tried playing it already. No, I didn't play it. I listened to it, but it's, uh, it's not really a piece. It's maybe more a sketch rather. It's just very short piece. Uh, uh, well, I'm not uh, a historian, so I cannot really tell. I hear that it sounds like Chopin. It's using his obvious and uh, already known tricks, or maybe not tricks, uh, maybe ways of writing the music. It's a dominant chord with half diminished scale, you know. It's, uh, we all, all musicians, we understand it. Is it real or not? It's not me to say. I wouldn't be surprised if it would be just uh, some way of promoting whatever. 
uh, maybe it's uh, maybe it's a testing us. How do we react? Well, that that's very interesting because I was also wondering if you know if it perhaps would need to be played in a specific way on a specific piano or perhaps tuned to a specific frequency in order to get that original sound or not. Um, it's not about you know uh, we are not living in a museum anymore. I mean, uh, <laughs> really, what what is interesting is it's. A, here and now. So if you are sitting at the piano, you should be really playing music. It means you should emanate with certain values, spiritual values. And this is a long way for every artist to get there, you know. And that's why people sometimes want, they don't really come to listen to music. They also come for concerts to meet somebody interesting. How to become an interesting person? It's an inner work which takes years, you know. Yeah. So, so even playing a, a, such a short piece could be a trip, but um, in my opinion it doesn't change much in the reality of Chopin's music and our understanding of his music, but it can change something in the reality of uh, modern informational world. Maybe it was a test. What is your creative process like? I mean, uh, you know, uh, before you, you know, create a new music piece, before you compose something, what do you do typically? The most important thing is just to start. So if you want to create whatever, the most important thing is to start, create. To start to write first note, you know, to write whatever. It can be a bass line or it can be a chord. First, I imagine some kind of aura which, uh, will become a piece in the future. But uh, the most important thing is just to start to make the first step. So it's my advice for everybody who wants to create, just start to do it and then the piece will lead you. But then sometimes, for instance, writers have a writer's block. So does it happen to musicians as well? Yeah, of course. But uh, if you have a writer's block, you just have to start. Very true. Uh, so um, uh, tell me about uh, the, the concerts. I mean, you have free pianos to, to transport, to set everything up. It's yeah. logistically uh, super difficult. What are some of the challenges? Yeah, right. You know, three pianos is just three times more pianos than usually. So <laughs> you need three, three times more effort to put it on stage, to tune it, to mic it up. Uh, to set all the arrangement on stage. Uh, I think it's very complicated uh, logistically, but it's fun. It's fun, especially for a pianist to play three pianos at once. Yes, def definitely. It must be. It must be challenging, but also also fascinating. So the first track from your uh, from your album has already uh, been uh, released. It's called Ambio Bluet. Perhaps we could uh, take a listen to, to how it sounds. Indeed, so of course we're warmly inviting our viewers to, to attend the concerts. Uh, I, I will try to do so myself. Thank you so much, sir. Leszek Morzer was my guest. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching The Pulse of Culture. Please stay tuned for more here on TVP World.